Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Iconic Repaints, back with another video. And today is something brand new. I am not showing off a custom, even though my channel is called Iconic Repaints. There's no repaint here. I wanted to do a series for a while now where it's just kind of focusing on X plus Godzilla figures. These are gonna be like reviews and short discussions. Uh, so I figure I finally get that going, right? There's no better time than the present. And what better way to start off with than the OG Godzilla himself, the 1954 beast. So this is officially called the X plus 25 centimeter large monster series Godzilla 1954 based um, from the film Gojira, the original Godzilla movie. Or as it will later be known in America a couple years later, 1956, it is Godzilla King of the Monsters. So um, the 1954 film is probably not what, you know, casual movie viewers got or, or you know unless you're like a real godzilla fan you probably are not thinking when you think of godzilla um what the 1954 film is so you're probably thinking like you know guy like two guys in in, in cheap looking rubber suits um smash wrestling around and smashing even cheaper looking dioramas you're probably picturing um goofy dubbing movies and, and just really small budgets power ranger type scale things so and the original 1954 film wasn't like that. Like, there's a reason why uh, the film was able to... I mean, the series was able to sustain so, so long. And I think a big reason is that be, is because the first film was so great. And it's so meaningful and impactful. It really was... You could have you made a series out of any monster movies. I mean, in, in the 50s and 60s, there was plenty of them. Godzilla started off with such a... Um, you know, on such a strong platform that it really, I think, is is a cause to why we still have Godzilla movies being made today. Kind of like how King Kong too. So, whereas like you have, you had King Kong was like, a, you know, a victim in his own story. I mean, the the, the story of King Kong is is tragic. He he's he's ruler of his island, but he's a good he's he's like a good ruler. You know, you you, you root for King Kong. Um, but he gets basically, here comes mankind, um, you know, or Americans and stuff like that. And they come to the island and they see an opportunity for money. So they, so they engage him, they, they knock him out, they, get, they tie him onto a ship and, um, or chain him up and bring him into Manhattan where he's then used as like a clown, like a circus clown or like a, an, an elephant on parade. And of course they can't control him. He breaks out. It, it all leads to King Kong's death, a, a death that he never had to um, have because he was minding his own business on his island. He's he's a tragic character. Um, Godzilla, not so much. Like Godzilla is still a kind of a victim, and I'll get more to that in a second. But Godzilla represents nature's wrath on mankind, and the ni original 1954 movie, mind you, is ten years after Japan actually suffered real you know real life atomic bombs being dropped on them um at the end of world war ii so everything is still very vivid and fresh and he, all of a sudden here comes this godzilla movie where everything that happens in this movie has has direct intent um to you know it's it's social commentary on nuclear war on hiroshima and nagasaki um on america even and so uh, yeah, so Godzilla is this, this unstoppable monster. He he he's awoke out of hibernation from H bomb testing, where it, it scarred him. His body's made of of scars and, and burn marks from the, the bombings. Um, he's pissed off, and even him like even him destroying a boat in the very beginning of the movie is a direct link, like a direct representation of the Lucky Dragon incident, which is a real life incident where um, one fishing boat was caught in the nuclear fallout of a, of a bomb testing. And the crew caught, or the crew got radiation poisoning and one of them passed away. It was a huge news at the time. And it changed a lot of things about, you know, the laws of, nuclear testing uh and it's something that we're still kind of dealing with even recently like you know now it's just different parts of the world but yeah 1954 the movie was made to kind of be like you know a call to end 
nuclear warfare before it even really got started. Uh, so yeah, Godzilla is like this unstoppable thing. There's no way around him. The weapons aren't hurting him. He turns Tokyo into a sea of fire. He's got this vengeful demonic face with these little pointy ears and, and eyes and these these creepy ass eyes that um you know he's just like a thing made of nightmares and i remember like this movie has so many like dark moments i mean when godzilla is done destroying the city it literally is is mirroring what happens like what hiroshima looked like and nagasaki looked like after the bombs um you have like these scenes where like you know people are like the hospitals are are filled out to to the seams and there's this dead bodies everywhere um you have like scenes where like a little kid like doctors are, are testing little kids for radiation and, and the little machines are going like berserk because just godzilla's presence alone is is you know fully contaminating uh you have like scenes with like you know these hopeless prayers and choir songs that are just really sad and unsettling one scene though that i will never forget and I, and I bring this up because this is not, this movie came out in 1954, right? So let me start off here. Titanic, Titanic came out in around, what, the year 2000? So you have this scene that's famous in Titanic where this, this mom is trying, the, the boat is going down. And this mom is trying to get her kids to fall asleep by reading them bedtime stories. Well, audiences had a hard time with that scene, I remember, at that time, around the year 2000. That scene, that scene hit hard. So imagine, nine, and that was what? The Titanic went down in like 1912? All right, so now you have Godzilla 1954. And this is about, let's just say, 10 years after the bombs came down. You have a scene where Godzilla is trampling through the city. And there's a scene with uh, um, a mom clutching onto her two kids. Like they're right in the path of Godzilla's, you know, like Godzilla's destruction. And she's sobbing and she's telling her two kids like it's all okay it's all okay we'll be with your father again soon and um and i'm probably assuming the way the rest of the movie is telling the story i'm, I'm assuming the, the father probably died in in the war oh uh, so you know it's just like you have that hopelessness and and it's like it's like not only is it the way the movie shot it's a sim like the cinematography is beautiful it's 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 the acting is is fantastic but the music, the music of the original Godzilla movies is so terrifyingly beautiful. It's it's haunting. It's like the Godfather theme. Like it's beautiful, but it's it's dreadful. And it's like the same thing there. So anyway, let's get on to the figure. Um, it, the, the sculpt right off the bat, I can tell you like X plus, X plus knocked it out of the park with this. He looks exactly like almost how he did in the movie. Uh... So this is, I told you, the 25 centimeters figure. There's also a 30 centimeters, um, which I used to have. I have sold it, but I did like that figure. It was really tall. It's just, I feel like this this figure has better proportions. His body looks like there's more girth. It just, it looks a little more organic to the to the suit. So um, I did sell the, the 30 centimeters, but that was a cool figure. There's also a, like a Yuji Sakai, which goes for a lot of money these days. Uh, he's a sculptor that's worked on actual Godzilla um maquettes that have shown up in the, in the movie so his stuff usually fetches a pretty penny there's there's an old gigantic which i'm not really a fan of um but i know a lot of people are and there's a brand new gigantic coming out this month and i think and that looks really cool i don't really have the space for another gigantic figure but um it looks great i'm happy for everybody that's got that coming because i know they're really excited anyway so the 30 centimeters that I used to have was all black and gray. It was really monochrome. It was supposed to be that way because he was the, the movie was shot in black and white. This one, there's definitely a tan or beige. It's slight, but it's there. Dry brush, and it really makes the texture pop. I think it looks fantastic. You know, the more texture you can get out of these things, the often the better they are because they're made of vinyl. A lot of times when you make things out of vinyl, the, the details could get lost. Um, but this is hard vinyl. Like if I threw this at somebody's head, it would it would definitely it would leave a headache for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, he's got the like the you know the the pin straight evil looking teeth with the big fangs. Um, he's got those beady freaking eyes that used to terrify me as a kid. 
Um, so my first experience with this movie is I, I grew up, you know, my mom used to tell me how Godzilla was a hero all the time. And TNT used to have a marathon. And, um, you know, so right smack down in the middle of like these movies from the 70s where Godzilla's a good guy. They put, they stuck this one in there one day and it confused the hell out of me because Godzilla was like evil. The movie was black and white. And it was the first time I saw Godzilla be so dark. And um, yeah, no, it, it definitely kind of screwed me up for a little bit when I was a kid. And... I always remember those freaking eyes, especially with it being a suit. You know, he doesn't blink or anything like that, but those eyes are creepy as hell. Uh, he's got those pointy ears. They, they just, that's like something straight out of hell. And um, this figure really, really replicates it perfectly. Um, I think it came out in September 2018. This, there was a regular version, and then there is a, um, a, a Rick exclusive version. And that's that happens frequently for just about every release there's a standard version which they have more of and then if you want to pay a little extra there's a a brick version which so, sometimes has a different feature like it lights up the spines light up or it comes with like a little mini figure or whatever so this one came out with the rick version had a little miniature dr sarazawa little figurine um who was in the movie the scientist that created a chemical weapon that was able to kill this godzilla and he actually died in the movie sacrificing himself because he was so worried about his, I don't, I don't want to say technology, but his formula um, being falling into the wrong hands and being turned into a weapon that does more damage in the long run than the weapons that created Godzilla himself. So that's, that's the moral tug of war that happens in the movie. It's really just beautifully done. And... Um, there's, a, there's a, a love triangle that plays into everything. So his decision at the end is to sacrifice himself to save, to rid the world of Godzilla, to save his consciousness of the formula ever falling into the wrong hands and to allow the two people that are in love um, to be together, removing himself from the equation. Powerful stuff. 1954, you know, they were, they were on it. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got to say. Like I said, it was it was... Classic movie, up for movie of the year, Lost the Seven Samurai, which is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. So timing is everything. It's okay. Nothing to hang your head about. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the first video. I got many to get through. I have, um, I got to just think about like the order I'm going to release them. This is again, the OG Godzilla, 1954. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Peace.